Hi, I'm Peter. I'm Lily. And we're from the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press here with... Sal. Sal Khan of, of the Khan Academy. <laughs> um, so, we're both 14. What did you want to do as a job you when you were 14? 14. Yeah, yeah, we're both. <laughs> Um, what did you want to do as a job when you were 14? When I was 14, um, you know, you don't, you actually don't know a lot of the jobs that are out there. And, and I think I had a vague idea that I wanted to be, um, I think, a, I, I, I just started learning about even what physics was when I was 14. And I thought that was very romantic, you know, all of, all of the, you know, Einstein and all the rest. So I thought there part of me wanted to be a, a physicist, uh, uh, but part of me was kind of excited about what was happening, in, you know, even when I was 14. I'm, computer science and I think a game programmer was on my list for a little while so you never know but it was you know I actually didn't steer too far from some of that stuff but uh, I think that's what I wanted to be when I was and I, I had given up on professional basketball by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of student were you when you were our age when I was your age I was a um, I was I was for the most part a good student um, I was probably a bit of a smart ass <laughs> um, and, and so I was, uh, I was, uh, some, some, yeah, I, 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 I was sometimes a, I was a good student, like I, I was interested in the subject matter. Sometimes I was a little bit, um, disengaged cause I, I was get, I'd get, you know, sometimes I was a student that wanted to sit and go deeper on a subject and you didn't have time to do that cause you know, it was a class and sometimes it was, uh, the, you know, the other way around. It's like, Hey, we went all over this already. Can, can we go do something interesting or go, you know, the, and so uh, I think that was my frustration is that I liked a lot of the subject matter and I, and I liked some of my teachers a ton, uh, but I sometimes got frustrated by the, 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 the rigidity of the process. Um, did any of your um, former teachers influence your making of the Khan Academy? You know, I mean, they, 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 they have to have. And I, and I think when I, when, I, when I think of the teachers that do, I mean, I remember even in fifth grade, there was a teacher, Miss Ellis, and what she did, you know, she taught social studies, so it wasn't math. Or, but what she did is she talked to us like we were adults. That she talked to us not like we were fifth graders. And that was the first time, at least in my memory, that I had an adult speak to me like I was an equal and expected me to come up with novel thoughts and didn't. Um, and, and, and that was, it, it, it made me think high, more of myself. And I think it was always the teachers that had that kind of, they, they really loved their, what they were teaching. They could go deep on the subject matter. And they treated the, the students with, with respect. Um, those are the ones that I, I really, I mean, I sometimes joke that there are some student teachers, very good teachers that inspired me to do the Khan Academy, and there were some that were, but anyway, that's <laughs> it. Uh, what were your best and your worst subjects? Um, my best subject was, was, was probably mathematics. Uh, my worst subject, and you know, this is, this is actually the lesson too. My, my, what I hated doing in middle school, you know, it's like one of those stereotypes, is I think a lot of people, you know, who are good at math say, I hate writing. Right. And, and I was one of those students. I was like, I hate like, you know, if I had to, like a, for a five page essay, I was like, oh, my God. And I didn't want to do it. And uh, it's only because I perceived myself and and writing incorrectly. I didn't realize that it's actually very similar that if you really are able to frame your thought. I mean, I, even then I liked talking a lot and I liked communicating a lot. <laughs> and I really just had to realize that writing wasn't about trying to guess what words the teacher wanted to, you to use. It wasn't about using a thesaurus and sounding fancy and all this. Writing was about communicating and writing was about just getting your, your thoughts on paper and then structuring it. And once that clicked, and this was probably later in high school and early in college, I, I just became, I loved writing. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I think in middle school, it was, it was my worst subject. I hated it. And, and now I love, there's nothing, you know, I get on planes now, I love to just write and I love to just write my thoughts down and, and share it with, you know, so it's, it's amazing how much your, your own self-perception can change. Um, so we are the future. Um, many of the jobs that we might do haven't even been invented yet. Yep. How do you think that your um, education, educational software can be um, adapted for the future and the unknown? Well, I think, I think the, the most important thing that you guys, and you're absolutely right, you guys are going to have to really, because what you need to know to, to be hireable or to be productive is, is going to change. It's already changing every two years, every three years. I mean, we didn't, you know, now the big thing is starting writing an iPhone app. I mean, what was that? You know, that didn't exist six years ago or, you know, um, or running a Facebook app and all these things that's changing so quickly is the ability to take control of your own, your own learning and the ability to, to kind of say, I want to learn this and I'm, this is how I'm going to do it. And I think, I think 
the, the meta level thing that we're trying to give students is, yeah, I mean, right now, a lot of the stuff we do is traditional math and science and, and chemistry and all the rest. But there's a, there's a, a next level of, because it's self-based, you, the student, are saying, well, I'm now going to tackle this. I'm now going to learn trigonometry. I'm now going to learn that. And those, you know, these core academic subjects, they are useful. They are, you know, they, you're going to see them over and over again, even if you're on an iPhone app or a Facebook app or you're working, you know, new media or, or whatever it might be. Um, but I think the real powerful thing is this attitude that you don't have to wait for someone to teach you something. And you, you shouldn't have to wait for the curriculum or you shouldn't have to wait to get into a class to learn something. That that, that, that information is there for you. And Khan Academy is one resource. There's a ton of other on the internet. And you can just say, I'm going to learn this now. And I'm going to, I mean, you guys right now, and, and you know, me and my, I'm not that much older than you guys, but you know, me, me and my friends in our mid thirties were like, kids these days have it so easy. You know, when we wanted to learn how to program a computer, we had to go to the library and check out books and then find a computer. And, and, and you guys in your pockets, you guys have more powerful computers than we had access to at the universities. And, and you guys can look up stuff on the internet and, and find out ways to program and, and test things out and other people will help you. And I think it's just that there's so much stuff that you have trouble filtering it all out. But uh, I think if, if you start now just getting into that mindset, like, well, it's all there. I don't have to wait for it to be fed to me. Um, I, I think y y all, you'll, you'll, you'll do just fine. Uh, you talk about students learning empathy. How do you think we can best be taught and best learn to be em empathetic towards other people? Um, you know, it's, it's the, the simple, I mean, I think, I think teaching is, a, is probably the, the, it's one of the hardest acts of empathy because if, if something, you know, if, if something bad happens in your life or my life, God forbid, you know, either, either of our, you know, it's easy to say, oh, I'm sorry that happened or, um, and, and, you know, people can pretend to be sympathetic and all that. But when you're actually trying to teach something to someone, you really have to, you really have to get over your own, hey, I know this thing, that person doesn't. And you have to get over your, your, your desire to show the other person what you know and what they don't know. And you really have to be empathetic. You really have to model what's going on inside of their brains. And I think, so I, I think teaching other people and, and, and learning to be good at that and is, is probably the, one of the best ways uh, uh, to, to, to practice empathy in a, in, a very, in, a, in a very real way. Thank you for your time. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks a bunch. Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.